Hello my friends! Welcome here, I'm so happy to have you here. In April and May I read popular and hyped books on booktube at the moment. Basically to see if they're worth the hype, but also as a way for me to get to know new books, new authors, and kind of grow my bubble of books. I am actually so excited to be getting into some new authors and reading these books. So the very first book I read was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I really enjoyed this. I went into this knowing that basically that our main character Avery had inherited a billionaire's fortune. His family had basically been disinherited and nobody knows why and nobody knows who she is. So that drew me in because I was like sweet we get some mystery we get some intrigue but there are so many layers of intrigue and mystery. I really enjoyed it. I like a good book with an old family home, with old family secrets and old secret passageways, secret compartments and riddles and puzzles. And I like a good book like that. So this was really my vibe. I really liked it. I gave it a 4.5 stars. So the genre is family and relationships, mystery and detective, thrillers and suspense, according to Audible. The narration was really good for the audiobook. I listened to audio. It's got a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end that very perfectly goes into the next book. And I have started reading the next book and I'm really enjoying that too. It is not disappointing. So the next book that I read or listened to is I finished listening to The Never Ending Summer by Emma Kennedy. This is a woman's fiction and romance. The narration was a bit blah but I could get through it and I think that the reason why the narration was a bit blah impacted my thoughts on this book. I did think that this book was a little bit drawn out, a little bit long, and it did take me a long time to get through it. But in saying that, I did really enjoy it. I think it has a really interesting storyline, a really great concept. I think maybe the execution of that concept could have been a little bit more concise. Basically, it's set in 70s England, and we've got quite a few main characters who are women. So we've got B and A. Agnes. And these are two young women who are wanting to have an adventure. They're wanting to learn a little bit about the world outside what they know. Then we've got Florence, who is Agnes's mother. This is 70s England. So Florence is challenging the views of the time. Florence kind of starts to realize that she's not happy with the box that she's been put in as a woman in the 70s. She's kind of realizing that she doesn't have to live the life that she's been told that she's supposed to live because she's a woman in the 70s and she doesn't have to be the the person and look the way and do the things that she's been told she has to because she's a woman in the 70s and so she goes on holidays without her husband without her family she kind of starts to learn who she is and who she wants to be outside of this environment where she's always been told who she has to be after some time both of her husband and her are away from each other they learn a lot about themselves and then they come back and get to learn about each other after having the realization that they've had which I think is a really cool storyline and a really cool dynamic okay so basically all of these women discover possibilities that they never really knew existed so it is quite a slow read so if you like a good slow read that you can kind of just pick up slowly over time, this is definitely a good one. It's a good read. So basically the impression that I'm left with this book is it's never too late to find yourself. And I gave it three stars. The next book that I listened to is Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. And this is a very popular book. As far as the content that's coming to me, the content that the algorithm chooses for me, it seems to be a very popular book. I was really quite excited to read this or listen to it. I really enjoyed it. I think it was a really sweet read, a really gentle read, a nice comforting read. It's got, it's like a nice coming of age romance. We've got some nice tropes in it, but I thought it was just really cliche. I've read a lot of books in my time that are similar 
similar to it. But in saying that, I really do love the way it was written. I think it's written really well. I think the author did a good job. I think it's just a nice, easy, comforting read. It also had a lot of movie quotes from rom-coms. So if you really love rom-coms, I think you'll like a lot of the movie quotes. And I like the way that the movie quotes are put in there. The genre is said to be friendships, emotions, and feelings. And I think the trope is potentially enemies to lovers and also fake dating, which is a very cliche mix of tropes. The narration was really good. So basically we've got our two main characters. They are, I think they're next door neighbors or at least they live very close to each other. And they've always, they grew up together. They've always teased each other. We've got our female main character who likes a boy who's back in town. He is good friends with her neighbor, but her neighbor is the popular boy type. And she sees him as kind of a jerk. She gets his help to get her crush to notice her. In the meantime, she gets to know her neighbor for who he really is. And in that sense, I really like it because it is really sweet. It's really, really sweet. I think it also does a good job of portraying different types of love and different types of relationships. You know, we've got our best friend, we've got our stepmom, We've got our relationship with biological mum who has actually passed. We've got different friendships in there, in different relationships, a relationship with her dad. We've got friendships with female friends, friendships with male friends. And I just really like the way it all, I really like that part about it, the friendship. I like the personal development in it of the characters and I love the way that all the different relationships develop and grow, especially the relationship between our two main characters. I thought it was very funny and witty and and very humorous and I really love the way it was written and it reminds me of the movie The Duff. We've got you know our typical shopping scene with the, the popular guy who's helping the underdog girl and we've got got our makeover scene we've got we've just got all the different things that very much remind me of that sort of teenage rom-com feel which is really good it is really nostalgic it gives you all the good feels. Also I rated better than the movies four stars. So the next book I listened to is Book Lovers by Emily Henry and Emily Henry has become quite a popular author and Book Lover seems to be quite popular but it's not my cup of tea. I I didn't think it was that great. Book Lovers is a rom-com. It's a small town romance. It's got a little bit of the corporate world in it. The narration was good but not amazing so the narration could have played into my feelings about it. There are a few parts that I fast forwarded because I don't really like the spice and that also could have impacted my thoughts on it but I kind of just thought it was meh. I really liked the beginning of the book. It had the feel good vibes of talking about books. Like if you are a book lover I think you will love the way that books talk about books. Like just giving that nostalgic feeling and just like the nostalgia of them in the book describing like different types of tropes, common plot twists, that storyline of that one cliche over and over over again. So I did smile through this part of the book because it just gave me all those like nostalgic feelings of loving books and knowing books. But I found the rest of it mundane. I really liked that it was in the small town. It had kind of the quaint vibe. It had the romance, but it wasn't super sweet. I really liked the sweet stuff. I did appreciate the character development though. I do love me some good character development, but it was a bit cheesy and I probably wouldn't listen to it again. I did have to get through it. Like I kind of had to almost make myself keep going through it. And I did enjoy it while I was listening to it, but I did also think it was a mess. So I gave it a three star because I thought it was written well. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I don't know if it wasn't my cup of tea because I was getting into a reading slump or if this book put me into a reading slump, but I got into a reading slump for several weeks, which is why this wrap up is April and May because the rest of April, I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. And so I listened to a lot of podcasts, a lot of YouTube videos and that sort of thing. But then then I was also trying to finish Red, White and Royal Blue, which I thought the concept of was really, really good. The narration just, I could not handle the narration. I just didn't like it for me personally. And so I think that was making it really hard for me to get through it. I would really like to finish that book one day, but I just decided for the sake of getting out of this horrible reading slump that I had to DNF it. So I DNF'd it 
did not finish that book. That really helped me get out of my reading slump. But then the next book I read was Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I went into this knowing absolutely nothing about it, but that I really wanted to try Taylor Jenkins Reid work because I'd heard a lot about it, a lot of people like it. I'm reading or listening to popular books, so I really wanted to try TJR's books. And so Carrie Soto is Back was just the one that was available on my library app at the time without waiting for a book that's on hold. I just started listening to it. I loved the audio. I think it was done really well. And I just loved the story, the plot. And I think going into it knowing absolutely nothing was such a good thing. It wouldn't usually be something that I'd pick up if somebody explained to me the plot or it's not really a genre that I usually read. I don't wanna say any more about it other than that, but I really, really enjoyed it. And it was a very good first impression of Taylor Jenkins Reid. And then I listened to Ender's Game, which was a full cast audio play. I really like the full cast audio books where we've got each character has their own personal and narrating it but it also has sound effects and I've listened to a full a few of these audio play books that have the sound effects and I'm just not sure whether I like them or don't like them I think they can add things but then I think they can also take things away I think that I'm a person who is really very imaginative when I'm listening to or reading a book that for example when I was a teenager I read the third Hunger Games book and I imagined it so much in my brain that when when the movie came out, I couldn't remember whether I'd seen the movie or whether I'd just read the book. And it turned out that I'd just read the book. So like, I have a very vivid imagination and I think that sometimes the sound effects can take away from that because they distract me, but also it might be different from what I'm thinking. I don't know if I like the sound effects. I'm also very sensory sensitive to sounds. And I think that plays a big role in why I'm like, mm, the sound effects can take away from it sometimes. So Ender's Game was written by Orson Scott. It's a fantasy space opera. Ender is our main character and he was basically born specifically for battle in mind. He was taken from his parents at six years old to go to space battle school where he was trained very rigorous, rigorously to become a general and to lead a group of other children into battle to basically save the world from an alien seemingly hostile species. I think it's a really interesting dynamic of the adults observing the children in all different situations and specifically putting them in situations to study and observe how they respond to train them choose them and specifically have situations to make them into and create them into what they want them to be and that's basically child soldiers. So there were parts of this book that I found really difficult to listen to that really pained me. It was also a little bit slow at the beginning but got better the more I listened to it. The end was quite intriguing. I think that this story can be quite political and there can be a lot of parallels between some of the themes in this story and some of the themes in our modern day world of different different things that are going on and there's a lot of different parallels that can be drawn but overall I think it's just a really good story uh, it's hard to read otherwise it was really good it was quite entertaining and the ending was quite good okay so then I tried to read or listen to Icebreaker one of my favorite youtubers Rachel Catherine she really enjoyed this book and she said that at the beginning she thought it was meh but then like by the end she was like yeah and so all right I'm gonna push through I'm gonna push through for you Rachel because you like like this and I trust you and I want to see how it ends up but I couldn't get through it I just could not there were a lot of parts that I fast forwarded because I don't like that much spice and I just I wasn't enjoying it so I was like I'm not gonna keep going with it if I'm really not enjoying it and I think I would really would like to maybe in the future maybe like when I have the capacity to physically read it might be a bit better because I can kind of see the parts a bit better than I want to skip I really am intrigued to see what the story is about when it gets better but I just don't want to do the part of getting there like I 
I just really wasn't enjoying it. So then I listened to The Hobbit and I've been getting more of my fantasy on. Like I don't, I guess I generally, I have read a lot of fantasy growing up, my favorite fantasy, and I have read a fair bit of fantasy, but I also haven't read a lot of fantasy. So I'm reading a lot more of quite popular fantasy for the first time and I'm really enjoying it. So Hobbit is the one that I've started with and I'd like to read through the whole Lord of the Rings series for the first time, but I really enjoyed The Hobbit. I really love the character of Bilbo Baggins and I just love how homey he is. Like he just wanted to get back to his Hobbit hole in his comforting chair by his fire with his food, with all his comforts. And I'm like, Bilbo, I understand you. I get it. I am just like you. I want to be home too. Yeah, I understand. But in saying that, I also, before I became sick, I was very, very adventurous. I love to be adventurous, but then to go home, get in my pajamas and read in bed when I could read in bed, when I had the neck capacity for that. I really, really related with the hominess of this book. Again, I found this book a bit slow at the beginning. It was kind of a slower read for me. I took a longer time to finish it, but at the end, I it was lot quicker for me and I was reading a lot more at once or listening to a lot more at once and I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a really good story. I really enjoyed it. I'd probably listen to it again. So the genre is fantasy, juvenile fiction and classic literature. I love J.R.R. Tolkien. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, just ignore me. But yeah, I really love this work. Okay, so Dune, D-U-N-E <laughs> by Frank Herbert. So this is also full cast. It has a different narrator for each voice which I'm really loving and it's fantasy as well and space opera and it's a huge book and there's so many in the series and it was written in 1965 which is really cool this is a 21 hour listen and I'm currently at 16 hours and I'm like Ugh. it is a really good book but it is just so long but then I looked at Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is all, almost just about 21 hours as well. And I'm like, there's no way that feels as long. I'm really loving Dune. I'm really loving the very different world. It is very political, quite environmental as well, but I'm really liking the different cultures in the book, the different cultural practices, different the different meanings of different resources to different people in different planets. I'm really enjoying it. Simeon watched the movie and June has been on my TBR for ages but I just Simeon watching the movie and enjoying it Simeon is my husband if you don't know if you're not familiar with me Simeon watching the movie and saying he really liked it kind of gave me that push to read the book or listen to the book and as I've been listening to it I've been able to like talk to Simeon about it which is really cool like did the movie portray this and he's been like has the book given more explanation into this and I'm like did the movie give the entire significance of the spice which he said it didn't so that's been really interesting to just be able to talk to him about that because I tell him about my books but like to actually be able to like have that conversation it sounds like the movie follows the book quite well from me not having seen it just hearing what my husband has said so that's been really fun I've really been enjoying that and I have been enjoying it but I just got to get it finished and then I listened to After You by Jojo Moyes this is the sequel to Me Before You and it broke my heart it tore my heart apart I'm not someone who gets like super 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 emotional about books and I didn't get super 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 emotional about this one but it really did tear my heart apart it was really good though. It was really well written. It was not at all what I was expecting. It was very gripping, very captivating. I think it also did a good job of showing the kind of the process of going through grief without really being too depressing. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's a contemporary women's fiction and I gave it 4.5 stars. And the last book that I read or listened to is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. This is a fantasy. It's very popular and I really enjoyed it. I really, really, really enjoyed it. So we follow the story of Selena, who's our main character and she is imprisoned. We know that she's also an assassin, but we don't know why she's imprisoned or how she became an assassin. We only know that she's very young. I think she's 18 years old. And basically she gets the opportunity to compete in the King's challenge to win her freedom. There's a lot of different differing of opinion of what order to read 
this series. Pardon me, some people say to start with the assassin's blade to get that background info on why she was an assassin, how she became an assassin, how she, why she's imprisoned, how she became imprisoned, and more about her, her family, her background story. But I'm really glad that I started with Throne of Glass because I like everything not being handed to me right at the beginning. I like the element of mystery, the element of intrigue, the element of finding things out as we go, figuring things out as we go, and kind of just not having everything handed to me. This was really fast paced. I got through it in a couple of days. I gave it a four stars. It really kept me hooked. It was really gripping, really intrigued. I wanted to know the mystery. I don't know if like when I read it again, it'll be as intriguing and as gripping because I know all the things that happened. Like I just wanted to know what happened. I just wanted to know who was behind what and why this was happening and who and what and where and how. And I wanted to know all these answers and I don't know if it'll be as gripping. If I don't know all those answers, but I think it'll still be a really good listen again when I read it. I don't think I'll say much more than that because I don't want to spoil it, but I do have a reading vlog where I read or listened to this book and shared a little bit more of my thoughts. If you want to go and look at that when I post it. And that appears to be it. So those were all the books I listened to in April to May. And as to whether book talk can be trusted. I think, yes, it can because I can't say that somebody's untrustworthy because of their taste in books because everybody's taste in books is different and I think that that's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that we've got all these different kinds of writing, all these different genres, these different tropes, these different storylines, these different plot twists that cater to different people and their likes. I think that that's really, really cool. So those were the books I liked and the books that I didn't so much. Feel free to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with my reading, what I'm liking, what I'm not. I share my experience of life with chronic illness and disability here on YouTube. I do vlogs as well. Feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.